The other day I went down this rabbit hole of watching a bunch of YouTube videos of people giving tours of their apartments in New York City. They were these beautifully designed pristine apartments, some of them with minimal design and a lot of beiges and whites and gold mirrors, and some of them maximalist with a bunch of plants and colorful art. But one thing I noticed that they all had in common was that they all felt very streamlined, very tidy, very put together. There weren't excess belongings. Everything was was intentional, even in those maximalist apartments. When you'd look at their closets or storage areas, they would be quite small because, I mean, this is New York City, so they didn't seem to have many belongings at all. And I watched video after video of people just having these seemingly perfect apartments with nothing in them other than these perfectly designed pieces. The more I watched, the more my guilt grew, the more I was just like, what is wrong with me? I have a whole house and I even have a storage area in my home and why am I living like this? How is it that I'm somebody even with a YouTube channel about minimalism and yet these people in New York City are living such streamlined lives? And then I got to one video where somebody said, you know, the only way I'm able to keep my apartment this way is that I have a massive storage facility. And then it clicked. Probably the majority of the people on these videos either have some kind of big storage facility that they pay for or a space in maybe a family member's home where they keep the excess belongings. And all of a sudden, I felt like the illusion popped, especially because I felt like as I watched more, it went from just like a little bit of guilt or light shame to pretty intense shame where I was kind of putting myself down mentally. And it got me thinking about how sometimes the perception of people's lifestyle is very different from reality. And the reason why that's bad is that there are a bunch of studies on psychology that show that really intense shame can lead to problems. Things like anxiety, a lowered mood, isolation, withdrawal, and even hiding, which I think when it translates to stuff could probably mean hiding our stuff away, kind of trying to avoid it or keep it hidden. Believe me, I've been there. So given all that, I realized I should make a video that's positive, that's uplifting, that empowers people to be excited to go out to declutter and to streamline their home if that's what's going to be helpful for them. A video that acknowledges that sometimes we're busy, sometimes we're not on top of all our stuff, and that's okay. In fact, it's very normal. But it's about overcoming that shame and setting your sights on a life that you actually want to live and focusing on that as opposed to just having a perfect, pretty home. I think that acknowledging that people do have shame and guilt around clutter normalizes it, and then we can move on from it and be empowered to make the changes that we really want to make. The first thing I guess I want to say about this is just that you don't need to feel like you're so special in a way. That's something that helped me is sometimes it's like, Aelin, you're not so special that you're the only one that struggles with collecting and keeping. You're not the only one with clutter in their basement or in their storage area. And yes, I've been working on it all and it's been streamlined a lot, but it's something I still struggle with. And another piece of this is that we all have our personal stuck points or areas where we do tend to like to collect. We just have stuff and bins of stuff and storage facilities and it builds up and that is the norm. I mean, realistically, statistically, that's what's shown to be the case. In the US, people have a lot of stuff. So in a sense, it's helpful to think, I'm not that special. I'm not that different. The types of struggles I'm dealing with, a lot of other people are too. Another thing I want to mention is just that I think a lot of this shame and guilt comes from the societal expectation. Part of it is that there is this implicit expectation that we all keep our homes very clean and streamlined. And I don't know exactly where that came from, where that became the norm, but that's something I think a lot of us aspire to because so often you go into a friend's home when they're having like a group dinner or a party 
and you just think, wow, is their home always like this? How do they keep it like this? And the reality is they probably don't keep it like that. And it's that all of us always are showing off our homes in the best way possible. And what's kind of embarrassing to admit is that maybe I'm even part of the problem where sometimes I show B-roll of my home as kind of an example of what a streamlined home could look like or just what my home looks like. And that's probably on one of the better days where it's looking really good as opposed to having clutter all over the dining room table. And I think, you know, with magazines, with Instagram, with TikTok, with all these different ways of seeing into many different homes, it just feels like we're bombarded with this stuff and it feels like everybody else has it all together. I want to have some breathing room to focus on what matters because for me, why I'm even pursuing minimalism in the first place is to have that breathing room to go out and to spend time with friends and family, to pursue my goals or interests, to try new skills or explore new places. I mean, granted, sometimes less clutter does reduce stress. There are even studies showing that, but I mean, at the same time, I don't feel the need to go so extreme with it that I needed to be perfectly clean all the time. But there is that societal pressure. And so I guess I just want to make the point that it's understandable why you feel the guilt and the shame because society is sending us all these messages that we're supposed to have it all streamlined when in reality, that's just not the case. To me, what's helpful in all of this is to think through what has helped me be motivated or to feel positively about decluttering and organizing and that kind of thing. Because if I just get into this negative cycle of feeling guilty and bad about myself, I'm not as motivated to go declutter. Now, I will say there might be an exception to that in that there is some research that a little bit of guilt can be motivating for behavior. So if you do feel guilt, maybe it's not always bad. You don't have to feel bad about your guilt. Maybe that can be used as a motivator to get you to go clean up a bit. But what I'm talking about is when it gets really, really bad, where it's overwhelming and you're in this negative cycle. One thing that's helped me is to look back and think about what has helped me be motivated to declutter in the past. I think back to some of my best declutters. What sparked that interest in decluttering that day? What conditions allowed me to do that and to have a good experience with it? If it's a busy week, I just feel ashamed all week that I haven't decluttered and then I just feel worse about myself. And sometimes it's acknowledging, you know what, this is a busy week. It's not gonna happen this week and that's okay. It's normal to have ebbs and flows and how busy we are and we don't always have to be decluttering or organizing. But I also think when you do have the space, it's about finding the time in your days to do it. Another thing that as I look back, I realize has helped me be motivated to declutter is to be in a good headspace. And I think part of this might be just like addressing other things in my life before I go declutter. So if I have some logistical to do's to get done, I want to get those done before I declutter. So I'm not constantly worrying about those while I'm decluttering. Or maybe it's actually just going out and having some fun the day before I declutter. So I feel like I'm in a good mood, like I'm in a good headspace. I also think a key part of overcoming the guilt and shame is looking back and thinking about the progress you've made. For me, sometimes that's hard because again, sometimes my brain just jumps to the negative and thinks about what I could have done better. But I think it's helpful to capitalize on your strengths and to think back to maybe a recent declutter you did and what you accomplished how that made you feel in the moments after the declutter, and then also maybe how it's affected your quality of life, even if it's in tiny ways since that time. A minor example for me is a recent junk drawer declutter I did in my kitchen. I made a video about it. I'll link it above and below if you're interested. Basically, I just did this little declutter, just took about 30 minutes going through a couple of junk drawers. Every time I'm in my kitchen and I reach for something in one of those drawers, I'm like, hey, this feels so good. I can see everything that's in there. It's easily accessible. It makes the process of finding something just that much quicker. And I appreciate my past self for having done that 30 minute declutter. It didn't take that much time. It wasn't that big of a change, but it really just makes life that little bit easier. And I think recognizing that and sort of meditating on it and savoring that feeling of it being easier helps motivate me to do more decluttering. I guess I just think it's so important to recognize that you're not alone in this journey 
and that if you're getting to a point of too much shame, that's probably not going to empower you and that it's okay to have a little bit of messiness. It's okay to have a little extra clutter, but it's about making little steps forward where you can, if that's something that's important to you. If it's not, forget it. Let me know if any of you have thoughts on what's helped you motivate yourself and feel less shame around your clutter. That's all I've got for you, but thanks so much for spending this little bit of time with me, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.